We have in the past covered but a few of the jewels that can be found in the crown of now lost civilizations which once dwelled within India. And since this, we have found the possible remnants of a number of different flourishments and additional devolutions within the granite historical record of our planet. Proof which we can now confidently demonstrate via a number of antediluvian sites which clearly display this cyclical behavior. The Ellora Cave System, for example, one of the most well-finished and thus precisely executed of which Kalish Temple, a site we have previously covered. Yet I digress. There is no possible way to define how long a religion can survive. As such, the fact that at least three different religious influences can be found upon these miraculous, enormous ancient ruins, once hewn directly from the bedrock of Earth, is proof enough of extraordinary antiquity. Along with these three different religious ages, our previous research among Elora's cave have ourselves found separate tool marks we feel logically left by a mere two separate civilizations, one of the famous cup and spoon mark era, claimed across northern Europe as Neolithic, while the other found upon Kalish and many others throughout India, indicative of yet another world-faring, yet far more globally powerful and capable, now lost civilization. According to modern paradigm, quote, the rock-cut activity at Elora Cave, three phases from the 6th century to the 12th century, the earliest caves, 1 through 12, discovered between the 5th and 8th centuries, reflect the Mahayana philosophy of Buddhism then prevalent in this region. The Brahmanical group of caves, 13 through 29, including the renowned Kalish, Cave 16, was excavated between the 7th and 10th centuries. The last phase, caves 30 through 34, reflecting the Jaina philosophy." End quote. However, what we do know for a fact and quite contradictory to the aforementioned mainstream theory, is that this series of 34 caves were all indeed planned and constructed within the abilities available at the era of each of their constructions. Some indeed more modern and thusly planned and executed to a more primitive ability. But Kalish and many others along the network are and were incredibly, seemingly impossibly well executed with unbelievable artistic and complex vision, created with technologies to cut rock of unbelievable and now lost and forgotten technologies, and thus abilities. It is popularly accepted belief systems attached to the sites are of a modern age. However, even this cannot be confirmed. Furthermore, we know that to create such a site would, in the modern age, take unimaginable effort and technologies, taking many, many years. Ergo, no matter what the mainstream explanation may be, or indeed the mounting areas of research and the enigmas we continue to stumble upon, adding to our list of areas of interest, all remain a growing and as yet unsolved mystery which we find highly compelling. An astonishing collection of ancient evidential items and rediscovered historical factors have allowed the argument for an once lost history to have existed, all but now a foregone conclusion. A civilization at which some point in our distant past was lost, yet a once highly advanced worldwide culture. The proof that these ruins were all built by the same people or by those who were in contact with each other worldwide is now, we feel, overwhelming, yet their technological capabilities were just as equally astonishing. Cut from nearly every type of strata, ruins with such precision, not only do they seemingly appear to have been cut with laser technologies, but the Barbara Caves is undoubtedly the jewel in the crown. When previously looked at by us, we were astonished by the finish of the cave's walls, both in surface and angle which, thankfully, due to the structure's sheltered nature, have survived for at least 2,300 years in incredible condition. Even more astounding, however, is that this precision has recently been confirmed using modern sonar-like technology, allowing for an incredibly detailed map of each cave to be created, each cave's image made from millions of points of reference. 
revealing, for the first time in well over 2,000 years, just how incredible the creators of these cave systems were. A feat many now believe we could not achieve ourselves. Perfect 180 curvatures on the roofs, perfect 90-degree angles on the doorways, perfectly flat floors, and perfectly vertical walls. The creation of the caves was simply perfect. We feel it is undeniable that whoever created these caves had in their possession incredibly advanced stone-cutting technologies. Yet, how this was done and with what are questions which we find hugely intriguing. Phoenix Hill, Xi'an China. In 1994, an extremely mysterious discovery would be made. Considered by the Chinese as the ninth ancient wonder of the world, a series of 24 ancient, artificial caves were discovered. Specialists have been quietly astounded by them. And the more we learn, the more of a spectacular and mysterious achievement they are seen to be. The first thing that struck explorers were their size. Each cave has a minimum floor space of 1,000 square feet, an unimaginable undertaking at the time they were thought to have been constructed. Officially dated prior to the dynasties of China, which began 3,000 years ago, meaning they are very, very old. The walls of the caves are scarred with strange uniform tool marks. The weird thing about the markings, is that they are all set on a 60 degree angle, every single chisel mark within the cave system without exception, is on an exact 60 degree cutting angle. This has led many to suspect that the caves must have somehow been dug using advanced machinery. However, because this feature is unique within our current knowledge of ancient structures, the angle of cutting could indeed have been made by hand, with the purpose of decoration, but this would have made the job of cutting them out even more laborious. Additionally, once the caves had been assessed and explored, a remarkable thing was realized. Although the caves were the result of excavating thousands and thousands of tons of rock, this rock seems to have vanished from existence. There is no trace of a spoil pile anywhere to be seen, it is as if the caves have always been there. No traces of their construction has ever been found anywhere, no cave writings, drawings, tools, or human remains, and nothing within historical records. The cave's construction simply doesn't make sense, and any evidence for their construction doesn't exist. Add to this the fact that the cave systems prelate Chinese civilization by some time, and show evidence of being cut out by machine. And the Longyu caves undoubtedly become a curiosity to scientific explanation, and historical understanding, to say the least. These remarkable caves, are a very strong and solid piece of evidence to suggest that advanced cultures have already been and gone on this planet, or that visitors of extraterrestrial origin, visited the planet, prior to human development. As far as I am aware, these are the only two possible scenarios for the builders of such a construction. The cave's systems are well over 3000 years old and still intact, whoever was capable of constructing them, was also capable of disposing of the huge mountains of rock that would have been excavated, without leaving any evidence of how they did this, or indeed built the caves anywhere. The caves are known as one of the largest underground complexes ever discovered. The fact that more is not heard about this wonderful place, is testament to their extraordinary existence, meaning no one within the scientific community, can, or want to try to explain them. Also, which I found highly interesting, when they were discovered they were completely filled with water, whether this was one sort of water, has not been disclosed, but I have personal suspicions as to how this water came to rest within these underground caverns. No fish were found within the caves, which many found odd. However, if you suspected that the waters be residual leftovers from a great flood, water from the great seas of earth, then over time, salt levels would plummet and fish accustomed to sea water would have died. Who do you think built the long new caves? The cave's existence hint towards a hidden history here on our planet, the history that we must unravel if we are ever to fully understand ourselves and die home. Dan Hall, yet pronounced Dane Hall after the Danes. Intriguingly, their purpose, although almost exclusively cut into chalk strata, is completely unknown and although claimed to have been created by an invading party, were solely created within Kent and South Essex, consisting of a small vertical entry tunnel, which then opened into what could be described as spacious multi-room living quarters, with the largest inner chambers measuring some 18 feet wide, and some set at a depth of over 80 feet, 
particularly those found in Hangman's Wood, Essex, which, interestingly, is now known as a site of special biological importance. These unusual chambers have baffled all who have investigated them. Undeniably, dating prior to the documentation of history in England, cut into an unusually hard variety of chalk, all of which showing no deer horn, metal or flint tool marks, or any of the stone cutting, and many individuals who have investigated the inner chambers have concluded that the Dane holes must have been cut into individual cube blocks and then somehow extracted from the chambers. How this was achieved, however, is yet another mystery. Thankfully, due to Hangman's Wood being a preserved area, more than 50 Dane holes still exist within the three-hectare site. What were the Dane holes used for? Who could have built them? Were they, like a number of other underground chambers we have covered in the past, found the world over, once built to be lived in, clearly attempting to shield oneself from an exterior threat? If so, why? Were ancient peoples in the UK also attempting to hide from something? An initial investigation of the Dane holes was undertaken in the 1800s, with almost nothing regarding the investigation into their origins having been undertaken since, although, fortunately, they are now receiving independently funded attention, the results of which will be available soon. We will, of course, keep you posted. Who dug the Dane holes? What were they used for? We find said questions highly compelling. A little over a year ago, we shared the story surrounding a mysterious discovery that was once claimed to have been made deep within cave systems within Ecuador, which some believe were originally man-made. A discovery that, although now concealed from the world, was photographed, studied, and documented thanks to the array of artifacts which had been amassed by an individual known as Father Crespi. An entire, seemingly alien metallic library complete with hundreds of sheets of gold, platinum, and other precious metals, hammered out to reveal an astonishing unknown language, clearly left by a people of tremendous capabilities. The caves in which this find is claimed to have been made is known as Cueva de los Teos, and although such discovery is denied by the Ecuadorian authorities, the Ecuadorian and, interestingly, United Kingdom's governments funded an extensive search of the cave systems soon after the claims became public. It attracted the attention of numerous individuals who traveled into the depths of these caves, including Neil Armstrong, the first man on the moon. What we wish to focus on this video, however, is the enormous seemingly man-made caverns which are found to be within the cave systems. We feel if these cave systems are indeed one day admitted, as having been artificially hewn from the bedrock, then this would undeniably reveal tremendous flaws in academia's claims as to the geology and indeed true history of the area. The cave system is so enormous, it has yet to be fully explored by modern man. Yet what has been explored has revealed highly compelling features which corroborate earlier claims of an artificial origin. The Moritza portal, for example, named after Juan Moritza, the individual who claims to have originally discovered the metallic library, is clearly of an artificial nature. The question is, why go to such lengths to construct this natural-looking cave system? Was it all created merely to hide this library? And if so, how important could the information held within be? And why did such a find attract the attention of the first man on the moon? Did the astronaut know something we are yet to discover? Juan Moritza signed affidavit dated 8th of July 1969, in which he confessed to a meeting with the Ecuadorian president, where he received complete control over his discovery, provided he could provide photographic evidence and an independent witness corroborating the discovery. When Moritza met with von Däniken in 1972, he took him to a secret entrance through which they entered a large artificial hall within the cave system. Apparently, von Däniken never got to see the library itself, 
he wrote in his book, The Gold of the Gods. Quote, the passages all form perfect right angles. Sometimes they are narrow, sometimes wide. The walls are smooth and often seem to be polished. The ceilings are flat and at times look as if they were covered with a kind of glaze. My doubts about the existence of the underground tunnels vanished as if by magic, and I felt tremendously happy. Moritza said passages like those extended for hundreds of miles under the soils of Ecuador and Peru." End quote. We feel the question now is, who went to these unimaginable efforts so far back within history? Why create such a place deep within the Earth with such an intended illusion of natural origin if you did not seek to hide something? Many still believe that the truth is still hidden deep inside its unexplored caverns, a truth that will force us to completely rewrite the history of mankind. Are the legends true surrounding Cuevo de los Teos? Did it once indeed contain an ancient metallic library, left to us by an ancient civilization? We find the evidence to suggest so highly compelling.